Well, hi, my name is Natalie from Natalie Danielle Yoga, and today I'm here to bring you a 10 minute total body stretch. Um, this sequence is really for those who are just coming out of a workout and you have 10 minutes and I'd rather you just get the stretch in. We're gonna be kind of getting into the shoulders, into the hips, into the hamstrings, down to even the arches of the feet while also challenging mobility to keep our joints nice and lubricated throughout the day. So this sequence is really inspired by adaptive yoga, so um, really, adapting to your needs as the student, as a client, as a practitioner, and in this case, this is really catering towards those who weight lift or do intense circuit training. And so when you kind of develop those tightness, getting it in it and working it out. So we'll actually get started in Tadasana. So typically, Tadasana is bringing the big toes to touch with a little sliver of space at the back of the heels, kind of think of a, of a pizza slice or something. If this is uncomfortable, you're more than welcome to bring the feet to parallel. Awesome. So from here, I'm gonna turn to the side so you can see whether your feet or to, are together or parallel. We're gonna take a gentle bend in the knees and then engage the core, bring the shoulders back Palms face forward, neck is in nice and in neutral. So let's say we just worked out, your heart's beating in your chest, and we're gonna to connect to the breath to sort of settle. <sighs> Breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth. Butterfly your eyes open, and we're gonna inhale the arms up, interlace the fingers, and take our first wrist stretch, reaching Nice and tall, try to drop the shoulders and keep that little bend in the knees. Exhale, release the palms back to heart center. Breath in, breath out. From here, let's inhale the arms wide into a T and then cross that right arm across the chest and hook with the left arm. So dropping the shoulders and breathing into the shoulder stretch. Inhale, release, take the arms back up. Maybe take a slight upper back bend, lift the chest to the ceiling, and exhale, palms to heart center. Moving to the other side. Inhale, the arms out to a T, get nice and expanded. And then we're gonna cross with the left, hook with the right. Relax the shoulders, soften the knees if they started to lock. Little engagement in the core. and release, inhale the arms up. And we're gonna take our first forward fold. Exhale your palms to heart center. And then because we just worked out, I want you to keep your hamstrings pretty strong while still getting the stretch. So keep a soft bend in the knees, engage the core, and we're gonna slowly descend, bring your hands to the ground. Think about bringing your belly onto the upper thighs. Head is heavy, spine is long. Now if this feels too tight, we're gonna take our inhale halfway lift but we're gonna bring the hands to the shins, lengthen the spine, pulling the navel to the spine, relax the shoulders, and then maybe even send the weight slightly back into the heels. So we're feeling the stretch a little bit into our hips now. On your next exhale, lower the hands to the mat, and we're gonna heel toe the feet about hip distance, keep a soft bend in the knees. Again, belly on the upper thigh and grabbing opposite elbow for rat bow. Right here, the head is heavy and the spine is long. You can nod the head yes, shake the head no, sway side to side. I really encourage you to get as much organic movement as you can. Inhale and exhale, drop the hands to the mat. We're gonna just step back into our first downward facing dog. So this one, really worry about rooting with the fingertips, engaging the core, sending the hips back. So we might already feel this in our calves. Taking one breath here. And then lowering the knees down to the mat. Untuck the toes, bring them together. Take the knees about hip distance and we're gonna sit the he hips back on the heels, extending the arms forward for child's pose or balasana. Take a deep breath into the low back. 
And then on your next exhale, walk your hands to the right for a side stretch. Now it's up to you whether you wanna just reach, or if you can feel the stretch there, you can stop. Or if you wanna stack the hands, that can feel pretty good, if it feels pretty good. <laughs> and then inhale back to center and move to the other side on your exhale. Getting that same side stretch at you, whatever um, variation you took, whether the hands were uh, stacked or unstacked. And inhale back to center. Inhale into tabletop, sometimes called box pose. Hands are gonna be underneath the shoulders. Knees are about hip distance. So from here, we're gonna stretch the core and also connect with our spinal flexibility. So on your inhale, again, connecting with the breath, drop the belly, lift the gaze, tuck the tailbone up to the sky. Exhale, peel the navel, round the spine, let the head hang heavy. And we're gonna take about three here. And then sort of take them at your breath. And if you feel like taking organic movement, wiggling the hips, or kind of bringing the shoulder back to the hips, sometimes that feels good. Again, get as much movement as you can. And if that we want to keep with the cat and cow, you're welcome to stay there. Eventually, we'll come back to tabletop. And we're going to tuck the toes and try to bring the feet a little bit closer together. They don't have to touch. But I really want you to think about getting the heel over the ball of the foot. So we're gonna sit back on the heels, stretching the arches, and sort of keep yourself honest. Tuck your little baby toes under. Lengthen the spine, engage the core, relax the shoulders. So this can feel pretty intense. We kind of nickname this pose fire, fire toes, but your bones shouldn't break or anything. So just try to connect to the breath here because the more intense this feels, the better this stretch is for all the tendons in your arch and your feet. And then from here, we can move into some thoracic spine twists and warming up. So we'll inhale and then exhale. Just bring that right hand behind you. The left is going to cross to the thigh and then go to the other side. Exhale left for four, three, two, one. So ease off nice and slow off the feet. They're probably going to feel a little intense and just sort of circle the ankles. You can scrunch and unscrunch the toes. Without beating your feet up, you're welcome to also kind of tap them on the mat just to get the blood flowing. And then come back to tabletop. We'll move to our second wrist stretch where we'll spin the fingers back. Now if you can't get all the way back, you can always move to a 45. Really, I want you to feel this wrist stretch. So if, if you feel it here, stop there. Breathing. And then release, spin the hands back. When we lift weights a lot, our, sh our wrist can get pretty tight. So start to fist and then just bring them down. Now be really gentle here. This doesn't need a lot of pressure. My wrists are pretty tight, just sort of fisting the hands, letting them face each other, and then release. If you need to wiggle that out, definitely take what you need. And then we'll move back to a seat. So come into a nice easy pose or easy cross-legged position. Relax the shoulders, lengthen the spine. Inhale the arms up. Exhale the right hand down. Reach up and over with the left. Keep the hips rooted. Now try to keep the shoulders from crawling up to the ears and then really feel your heart twist and rotate up towards the ceiling. So really lengthening the side of our body. From here, we're gonna go into the mobility movement, circling the arm down and back up for three, two, one, and then switch, bring the arm up and back for three, two, one. Inhale, both arms up, 
and then gently lower them down to the mat. So from here, taking a little tiny hip opener, crawl the fingers forward and find length in the spine. A lot of times when we take the forward fold, we wanna really crunch and round. And I want you to really think about lengthening from the hips out through heart center, keeping the neck in neutral. So this can be pretty subtle. And then inhale, let's rise up. From here, we're gonna switch the cross of the legs. Take the arms up, moving into a shoulder stretch. We're gonna grab opposite elbow, right hand on top for this first one. Find a lift in the spine so your rib cage is, is over the hips. And then we're gonna take our left hand and tuck it behind the back using our right hand for a nice little tricep stretch. Breathing here. Excellent, begin to release. Take the hands on the knees. We're gonna go back to that same spinal flexibility movement. Cat and cow, send the, the body back. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Back to neutral. Taking this on the other side, left hand down, right arm up. Getting that nice, big, long side stretch. Keeping the hips rooted. Heart reaching up towards the ceiling. And we'll take those mobility movements. Bringing the arm down, back and up for three, two, one. And forward and up for three. Reversing our circles. Two, one. Coming back to center. Walk the fingers down, taking our second fold. Inhale, rise up. And taking that, sh we're switching the cross of our legs. <laughs> And then taking that same stretch, this time left elbows on top, feel that lift and length in the spine, bringing our spine in kind of a neutral position, but really supported by the core. And then reach that right arm down, left hand just gonna gently rest on top so we get that tricep stretch. And release. Shifting forward, back to downward facing dog. And this time I really wanna teach you guys to down dog to where we're protecting the wrist. So bring the hands one palm print above where they are. Sort of spread the fingers and think about mimicking the arch of the feet. We're gonna kind of gather, creating a little mound, a little arch in the hands. Tuck the back toes. We're pressing into the fingertips, specifically into that index finger and thumb. As we press, we wanna send the pressure rotating inward towards the hand. And as we send the hips back, take your shoulders back, engage the core, soften the knees, gaze at the navel or inner thighs. Inhale the right leg up and really feel that stretch. Exhale, knee to the chest, maybe step through, or you can always just lower the back knee and just step it through if you're in tabletop. From here, hands are gonna come onto the hips and kind of feel your core gently engaged. There's a little, um, support your low back is slightly lengthened. Um, let me kind of adjust, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, we're gonna keep the knee over the ankle and so that we get a little deeper into the hips, sort of kind of claw your feet forward, sink deeper into the hips, keep your core supported and sort of root down in the big toes. Reach the arms up and today I'm going to hook the thumbs and relax the shoulders. So it's a pretty deep stretch here. And the psoas for the hips. Exhale, lower the hands down to the mat, tuck the back toes. And again, that heel is over the ball of the foot. And I want you to lengthen. Think about keeping your belly to the thigh, your leg back. So a lot of times we wanna lock this knee and I want you to keep it soft today. Pull the right toes towards your face 
and take your hands either by your side or even reaching out behind you. And again, I want you to think of that line. So instead of folding, lift your heart forward, and this is gonna go a little bit higher on the hamstring. And as you can see, I have tight IT bands, so my foot is wiggling. Inhale, come back, knee over ankle. Tuck the back toe, lift the back knee, and I want you to step your foot out to the side, and then one step in. Bring that heel down towards the center of your mat. So we're almost coming into a 45 degree angle. Those more familiar with yoga, it's a little bit similar to a warrior one stance. From here, again, lengthen that front leg, and you can definitely use blocks or props, but if we're just getting a quick stretch, I just want you to feel your right hip pull back in line with the left. Already can feel that in my hamstring. You can lengthen the heart, and you can stay right here. If we're wanting to go deeper, you can start to Fold. And you have a pyramid pose, a little modified. The hands are down rather than behind the back. But our hamstring's definitely feeling it. Awesome. Re bend knee over ankle. And we're going to step our back foot to back to that lunge before spinning it down to parallel. And you can even step the foot. A bit in to shorten your stance. We're going to rise into triangle pose. So we're going to lengthen our right leg, send our hips back. And so you feel my hips start to open, or see my hips, I can feel it, you can see it. Reach up, stack the shoulders, and open the chest. Ideally, we're feeling this stretch in our hip and our side. We're breathing. Root down, inhale, we're rising up. Lift the front toes, spin to parallel. So your feet can be parallel here, or just very subtly pigeon toe. Just sort of depends on what feels good. A lot of times when we come into the forward fold, again, we have that habit of wanting to lock our knees. So I want you to keep the knees a little soft. Inhale, and just like the forward fold, a nice supported core to bring you all the way down. My knees are gently bent and I'm pressing into the pinky toe edges of my feet. As I come down, you can just let the head hang heavy or you can reach back. So from here, I'm pressing into my pinky toe edges and then I'm lifting my tailbone a little bit higher to the ceiling and breathing here. Inhale, walk the hands for a halfway lift. Exhale, the hands on the hips. Inhale, rise up. And we're going to do all of that on the other side and kind of in reverse. Sounds complicated, but it's going to be easy. Just spin the back foot towards the back of the mat, coming into warrior two, but we're really going to just come into our triangle pose. So if the back foot needs to step in, adjust. Lengthen that front leg, send the hips back, reach forward and then tick-tock the arms, find that triangle pose on this side. Our navel is kind of engaging towards the spine, so we're still supportive here. And then inhale, rise up, re-bend knee over ankle, and we're just gonna windmill the hands down, coming into that lunge, so we pick up that back heel, let it pivot, and we're gonna take the same adjustment, taking the foot out to the side, and then one up, bring that heel down towards the center of the mat. Lengthen the left leg, feel that hip gently square in line with the right. Lift the heart to center, or up or forward, and then exhale, fold. Inhale, re-bend knee over ankle, step the back foot back. We're gonna lower the knee down and come into our hamstring stretch. So lengthen that front leg. Again, curl the toes towards your face. Hands can come back, 
heart moves forward. My IT bands are tight. <laughs> we'll get to those in a second. Inhale, re-bend knee over the ankle. Untuck the back toes. Hands on the hips, engage that low belly. If you can wiggle, wiggle the foot forward. Keep the knee over the ankle and reach the arms up. Relax the shoulders away from the ears. Soften the jaw, the face, relax. And then exhale, lower the hands. Tuck the back toes, lift the back knee. Step the foot to the top of the mat, bend the knees, head is heavy, spine is long, forward fold. Inhale for halfway lift. Feet are still about hip distance. Lower the right hand underneath the face and bend the right knee. Stack the shoulders and twist. So we wanna feel a little bit more. You can root the big toes into the mat. Reach the head forward, send the hips back, navel to spine. So really trying to lengthen out. And this is definitely getting those IT bands that are so tight for me as well. And switch left hand down, bend the left knee, stack the shoulders and twist. Again, if this is too low, you can always bring a block or a book underneath your hand. And lower the hands down, bend the knees, root down. We're gonna roll up nice and slow. Vertebrae by vertebrae, head is the last thing that comes up. With its shoulders roll to the ears and down the back. Inhale the arms up, moving into more shoulder stretches. We're gonna reach down with the right hand. And we're gonna reach down, back and up coming into shoulder flossing. So maybe we grab the hands or the fingers. That's cool. If you need to use a strap, if you're just gonna reach, that's good too. So you don't necessarily need one. And then coming back to the spine, sometimes I like to hinge like this. I'm like, oh, I got my hands, but I'm breaking my back getting into it. Uh, soften the knees and engage the core to bring the spine in neutral. And release, unwind. Reach one arm up, one arm down. Take both arms up and we'll switch. This time, the left side for me, since I'm right-handed, is a little bit tighter. So this one you might get to see me not grasp. <laughs> Reaching the hand back and up. Again, if I can't reach, you can use your t-shirt if it's not expensive or a rope, or you can just keep energetically reaching for the other hand. Soften the knees, engage the core, even here, we're keeping the integrity of the spine nice and long and safe. And release one arm up, one arm reaches down. Both arms up. Exhale, palms to heart center. And we'll put the weight into the right foot and finish off with some nice quad stretches. Reach back for the left foot. Grab the back heel, try to bring the knees a little bit closer, not quite touching, but a little closer. For here, if you're already feeling it, awesome for bringing that heel towards the glutes. Sometimes I like to flex my foot, and that'll get a little bit deeper, higher into the quad for three, two, one, release. And if you need to shake it out, you can shake it out. Other side, reaching back for that right foot. Heel comes closer to the glute and getting that quad stretch for three, two, one. Awesome, thank you so much for joining me. Hope this was a little bit, a uh, little bit, <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Oh, this was great good for you to get that stretch after a workout I'm a little sweaty but that's how we're releasing those muscles we're lubricating our joints thank you so much